But I really, I'm so out of the clue, out of the loop with this kind of stuff. So I, I don't even know like what the kids are into. Maybe I'm just an old fuddy duddy, but yeah, I would say that. <laughs> so I don't really know what you youngsters are into. From the couple who put the Chris in Chris Kringle, the K2 Studios proudly presents a Christmas extravaganza. Brought to you by the world famous Chris and Christine Show. Hey, what's happening? How are you doing today? Thank you so much for listening. And I am Chris. And I'm Christine. And welcome to episode 154 of the Chris and Christine Show. Do, 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 do. Ah, it is the countdown to Christmas. We are only like one week away, isn't it? I think we, yeah, I think so. Because isn't Christmas on a Sunday this year? Yes, it is. And I actually have weekends off. So yeah, I get Christmas off, which kind of sucks if I, if Christmas falls onto like a weekday, I normally would work. They would just have to have me work it like a normal you know, job. I mean, I know you guys get spoiled. You get Christmas off whenever it's off, but you know. Okay, wait. So you get Christmas day off. Are Christmas Eve and Christmas Day holiday pay? Um, I don't want to brag, but no, um, I, I'm, I'm logistically trying to budget how much money of yours I get to spend. So oh, back to, I see how it so is. So Christmas yeah. Eve and Christmas Day are both paid holidays. Uh, I believe they are. Yeah, I have, and to, then, I have to double check though. You and know. then New Year's Day. Yes, New Year's Day, which and is, it's a day off for you too, right? Because it's on a uh, Sunday. It's is New Year's Day on a Sunday. It's a week away from Christmas. Oh, babe, babe, look at this. You, you get Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, New Year's Eve. And New Year's Day off this year. That is a miracle. That's a Christmas miracle. This I know. Year. We are winning in life right now. This is like maybe the first time in our entire relationship where we've had all four holidays off together. That's amazing. It's incredible. Although we did not have Thanksgiving off this year together. That is very true. I had to work it and I missed on out on everything. You did. And I just like was morning the absence of your presence here all day but we did have family over so now that i realize this we actually get to have plans that's amazing you know i'm a horrible planner <laughs> no but i get to think like i mean getting to have you home for christmas eve and christmas day that's amazing that's so exciting it is very exciting that's why like when i plan out the calendar for the the year before i was looking at 2023's calendar i was like wait a second because i kept the same schedule my, my days off are Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. And then I just happen to be, those are the days that fall into the holidays, which is great. That's fantastic. Um, I'm so happy for you. Thank you. But I wonder about next year, if I keep the same schedule, I am keeping the same schedule. Would Christmas be on a Monday Monday next year? Well, we don't need to borrow troubles. Or let's, Tuesday, let's focus on what that literally the gift that we get this year of having all of those holidays off together. Man, if we would have thought if we would have thought about things a little bit better, we could have like planned a weekend away and maybe we even still can for New Year's weekend. That would be great. What I have never have ever in the history of my life I can think of <laughs> have done anything like spectacular for New Year's. Well, no, I mean, like, it doesn't need to be spectacular. I meant like we could pack up the kids and we could like go up to see my parents at the cabin and let them play in the snow. Oh, like traveling to see your family. Yeah. Oh, I thought you meant like going to Vegas or something. No, no. I mean, like kid friendly. I mean, we got the kids with us, but now we can actually think about it. I totally wasn't. My brain wasn't even there. That's exciting. That is amazing. Fantastic. Yeah. I know that I know working where I work, um, like going back to that is that Whatever day you work is what you work, no matter what the holiday is. It right. just Unless you like have it as vacation day, right? No. Well, the only way you get that is if you're the top senior guy right. and you're only one of those and he already picks it every year. He picks, basically he'll pick like the two weeks for Christmas. He'll pick like the week of Thanksgiving. He'll pick like um, basically the big holidays right. really is what he picks first. And then all of us get to kind of go in line and pick behind him based on our seniority. So right. when it gets down to me, to pick my vacation, I'm like, well, obviously I can't pick any holidays. Those are all like right. off the table. So what I try to pick is something during the summer. So we can go on a vacation with the kids and then my birthday and maybe something you know else I can figure out and, yeah. and fill in. But it's just kind of one of the things that kind of sucks is that even though you may have like a really bad schedule at my work, like some of the guys, they have to work weekends or whatever and their days off are like Wednesday, Thursday, Friday or something like that. Uh, it's, yeah, I was telling the guys one year because Christmas actually fell into those days. Uh -huh. So I was like, even though you have to work those crappy holidays, those crappy weekends all year long, 
you get lucked out because Christmas falls on your day off. Right. So you're getting, you know, you're, you know, you're getting hooked up, you know, in a long way. You That's know. awesome. Well, you know, I'm sorry that you're down the food chain a little bit, but I am not sorry that we get the holidays together. And speaking of the holidays, have you finished all of your Christmas shopping? Wait a second. I don't usually start my Christmas shopping till like the 24th. Usually uh, like around no. five o'clock at night. No, no. <laughs> veto that. <laughs> You know what? That was one of the things when we got together and you made that comment. And I was like, you know, a big thing for me, I'm not, I don't expect to get gifts, but when I'm in a relationship and I know that we shop for each other, <clears throat> being able to see my gifts under the tree for a few days before helps me to get excited. And so I actually am looking at a pile. Wait, you're not supposed to look at that. I know. I see it. You told me it was my Christmas presents. It's a pile of boxes and containers. I don't know what they are. But I don't know what they are either. To tell you the truth, that's why I gotta but they're go not, through them. I mean, we're here in the office, so they're not wrapped yet. They're just in, you know, cardboard. Well, and, that's what Amazon delivers them in. Yes, you know? exactly. Well, but they, know, all, just, they all have my name on them, so I don't know what's <laughs> in them. So I have to go through them one of these days, and like, I'm gonna get some wrapping gear. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to town. I'm gonna have some Christmas music on here, probably K2 radio playing with the Christmas jams, and I'm gonna be playing, wrapping all these gifts up. That really gets me in the mood. I love is that. When, is when I play the Christmas music while I wrap gifts. It's like really how I get into it. It's a a thing I do every year and I always postpone it till the very last minute because I usually am a little too busy running around doing stuff. But this year you're not because you're going to wrap them tomorrow, right? Or if I don't make it tomorrow. No, you're going to wrap them tomorrow, right? I'm saying if I don't make them tomorrow. But you're going to wrap them tomorrow, right? (laughs) I'm saying yes. But Chris, you're going to wrap them tomorrow for me, right? Yes. Thank you. No, no, (laughs) if you're going to wrap them tomorrow for me. So I get a whole week of seeing them under the tree, right? Sure. Why not? Yes. You're going to wrap them for me tomorrow. So Christmas is actually one less than a week away. No, it's a week. Well, this episode is going to come out either tonight or tomorrow. So it'll be on the one week countdown because it is currently Saturday night, just one week prior to Christmas. And, you know, it's been interesting because down in in San Diego, you know, it's different when you live in different types of climates around Christmas. Sometimes it's hard to feel like it's winter. And in San Diego, our winter is like super mild. I was seeing this post. I think maybe even you had put it up on like Instagram or whatever. And it was like talking about people being like, very upset about the weather and it being too cold. Like they called themselves weather wusses. Like if it was below 75 degrees, then they were like, it's freezing in San Diego. But then if it's like 80 degrees or more, then they're like, oh my gosh, it's so hot. So like to live in San Diego and to be perfectly happy, you need it to be like an absolutely perfect, like 73, 74 degrees, Except for during Christmas week, which I do like for it to be a little chilly so it feels like Christmas. You know, I like the cold too. Unfortunately, I don't like being in the cold. Like I, I think I'm allergic to a couple things. <laughs> One of them. Work. It, work yeah, work. I'm allergic <laughs> washing to, dishes. Washing dishes. <laughs> cleaning around the house. Picking up after myself. Going to get the mail. Uh, what else am I allergic to? Uh, helping Christine with anything. <laughs> But I'm also Truth. I'm also allergic to the cold. I cannot stand the cold at all. I mean, I am like, like I, I always tell Christine when I'm in bed, I have to get into like the fetal position. Uh, oh, the, you said it correctly. Thank you. Fetal position. What do you normally call it? The fetus position. <laughs> yeah, I get into the fetus position and like I fetal position. I ball up right. like a little ball, and I'm like got all these blankets on me. I'm so freaking cold. Well, part of that is that you have like 0% body fat on your body. You are like, you're very trim. You uh, always stay very trim. And you've, you. you've said things before like, oh, you know, my weight, da, da, da. I'm like, dude, you got like, I can't even pinch an inch on you. What are you talking about? All this flab right no, here, baby. No, you don't. But I could totally get at that, that, you know, you're you're pretty trim. You work outside in the, the cold. Oh, in it's the freezing evening. cold. And I have, well, I'm bundled freezing up. Freezing cold in San Diego is 51 degrees. Come on, be real. Actually, last night, I swear, the temperature on the truck told me it was like 45 in one place. Uh, Yeah. And then back where my parents are, it's like in the 30s. And if you go up to their cabin, it's like in the 20s. Yeah, but you're not working outside all night long in that. That is very true. You know, so it does get very cold. And uh, hey, speaking of cold, crazy things working last night. I went to a brand new uh, gas station last night that they gave us, and it happened to be like right next to the San Diego airport. Oh, wow. Like so close that as I'm delivering the gas, 
all of a sudden I hear this rumbling sound. I look up and this jet airplane is like almost landing on my head wow. because it lands like right over the, because it has to pass over the station and like touch down right across the street. So it goes Ooh. right over me and it touches down. I could see in about every five minutes, a new airplane was landing. Wow. And then I saw like a little tiny airplane coming across like, <laughs> <laughs> like one of those private ones. Uh, Yeah, but it was like a, like a private jet. So yeah. it was smaller than the other one, than the regular like Southwest or whatever. But it was uh, so cute, like big one, big one, little tiny one comes by. It's so kind of cute. Well, because they have right next to the San Diego airport, it's like there's one big runway, but you have like on the, if you're looking at it from the gas station side where you were like facing the back of the airport on the left hand side, you see like the terminals. But on the right hand side, there is a private terminal for private jets and so i think i did see that building yeah yeah. so you actually when you're flying private you bypass the whole airport you go to this other side you check in security is totally different there's no like way. a little waiting room and there's you know maybe 15 20 people and you know waiting for the different private jets do they even have like a tsa at the private place i don't know i don't know because they're private jets so i'm guessing they do because they're still part of, FAA you know, or whatever. yeah, like they're still being transported. But I think that it's different where it's, I mean, they still have to like look into your bags and all of that. But I mean, when you're flying a private jet, it's like your own car. I don't know. Yeah. You know it's like your it's own like a plane. shared Uber. I mean, depending so, on yeah, if you share so you're it. not really like. I mean, it's your own thing. I would think. I wonder if there is any kind of security check. I mean, just like a walk-on kind of a deal. Like I, when I when I flew the airplane with Jacob, we flew out of um, the small airport around here, and it was just like a show. It was like an old-time airplane ride, just give you a ride around the city for like twenty minutes. Oh, like an air show? Yeah, kind of like that. Of what it was, and it was an old-time. The airplane actually, I don't know what it's called, but I think it's called the Ford something or other. It was the same airplane they used. Wait, in, you chose to get into a Ford airplane? I know. It's crazy. It's a classic airplane. It's from the movie Indiana Jones. The the movie, the plane they use in Indiana Jones movies, like the first one, and the okay. second one. Anyways, that kind of that plane, that exact plane. Uh, what's it called? Ford something. Anyways. Anyways. So we rode a uh, ride on that around the city. It was so cute. We were driving, flying up. Uh, Jacob was so little and he's like waving to everybody <laughs> from above, like, like they can see him or like that, but they can't see you. We're up there flying around. If only he was that little and sweet still. <laughs> I know it's, they grow up so fast. They grow up from <laughs> sweetness to, you know what? Sass. <laughs> sass. But when he, we did that, we just did a, we signed a little waiver or whatever. It was no TSA. There was no like, I mean, it was like a Cessna you're getting into kind of a thing. Yeah. So, so it wasn't like a standard airport check-in kind of deal. So I wonder if the private airplane airport place has it more like that. It's kind of casual where you kind of go in and kind of like, you know, you kind of you know do your thing. And then they escort you like, like, a, like an Uber. I can pick up an Uber thing. You yeah, know? I don't know. But one of the things that I was thinking about is when it comes to like the airplanes is how impacted I wonder travel is, is going to be this year now that. We're really, you know, I would say I don't think COVID's over, but very much on the tail end of the severity of COVID and people are starting to really get back to normal. Last year, I think it was still a little bit dicey where people weren't all like really anxious to travel. But I think like this year the world is back and I wonder what it's going to be like at the airports over the next week and a half while people get ready to start holiday travels. Well, it's funny you say that. I just saw something in the news about at LA they're doing, they're trying to say that there's a big like resurgence with COVID and with the flu. Yeah, the flu is bad. And with some other stuff. RSV and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, RST, ACHD, 10425. I don't what know. What are you talking about? All RSV. The, all these different codes they got coming out, you know. Anyways, they want you to mask up, like triple mask, like right now. And people are like, eh, I'm kind of over it Yeah, <laughs> right now. I, thought, I don't think, I think to get people to mask up again is like, I don't know if they're going to do it. You know, they may. Yeah, I don't know. I well, see well, I wasn't it. worried about that as much. What I was going to say is the thing that I always think about is when people are getting ready to travel, like to go see family, the complication of having to pack presents and especially like for parents that are packing, that are traveling with their children and going to a destination and then have their kids presents that they take with them. But you can't wrap presents when you go through TSA. I didn't know if you could do that. I, I never thought can't. about that. You're not allowed. Like they will have you open it. No way. Yeah. Well, so don't they send it to the machine, the x-ray still, machine? Still, it doesn't matter. You can't have a wrapped gift. They will unwrap it. And so... 
I've thought about that many times. Like when I thought, oh, well, maybe I'll go travel for Christmas. And I'm like, ugh, like maybe if I'm driving and I, cause I, then I can wrap everything ahead of time. Um, and when I lived down here, when I first moved down to San Diego and uh, Ezekiel was still living up with his dad and I was trying to figure out like the holidays, you know, I didn't have you and I didn't have our family down here. I would go back up to Kingsburg for every Christmas and I would seriously debate on like, oh, am I going to fly? And every time it was like, well, if I fly, I have to unwrap everything mm, and I have to carry yeah. everything in my suitcases, which means it leaves like no room for my clothes. Well, why don't you just ship the stuff? I mean, you know, that would have been smart. <laughs> but then I always worried about like, oh, is it going to get there in time? So I would end up driving and everything would be wrapped and I would take it that way. And, you know, that's kind of the way it was. I'm grateful that I'm able to stay put on the holidays, but I will say I really do miss my parents and my sisters and my nieces and nephews on the holidays because my family growing up, we were always together. Everybody was together on the holidays and it's just like a very loving and fun time and no drama. And um, I just, I do, I love our family down here and I love um, your parents and I love your sister and her family, but I will say that it's a little bittersweet around the holidays because I do feel like, you know, it's, it's hard not being able to be with my family every year. Hey, you know, uh, speaking of Christmas, one of the big things, of course, every Christmas is Christmas toys, or I guess they call them holiday toys this year, you know? Why would they call them holiday toys and not Christmas toys? Well, because everything's PC right now. You can't call things Christmas without offending what? somebody, you know, with, what yeah. are you talking about? It's their Christmas presents because they are Christmas toys. But as you were saying, what about toys? Well, you know, every single year I remember growing up, there's always like the big hot, like this item. Like remember when the stores were like, like selling out of whatever the hot item was and like people were like fighting each other in the streets. They made Wasn't a movie. there an Arnold Schwarzenegger yes. movie about that? Yeah. What? Jingle all the way. Yeah. What were they fighting over? It was like a rocket man or something? Yeah. I don't remember the actual like character's name, but it was like a rocket doll rocket dude rocket dude <laughs> rocket doodle do didn't he like dress up as him or something to yeah. try and get into the the parade to i don't know i remember like bits and pieces of it yeah sinbad was the other um character the other who, dad yeah. yeah who wanted the toy for his son i guess the last one or whatever it was so funny i remember on the uh the movie they had this thing where they had to do this radio show contest thing they both show up at the station they're trying to do some kind of goofy thing and i think it's how Schwarzenegger ended up in the costume to do some kind of a parade thing or something like that. And, wow. Well, but, I I don't know if there was ever a year as a kid that I was into a specific hot item that was not able to be purchased. But one of the things I do think about is how much different life must have been for our parents pre-internet when they had to deal with the new hot item and you know one of us would come home from school and be like oh my gosh i have to have this oh i know absolutely so uh then on this episode today we are gonna go over some of the hottest toy items in the past century i guess for the mm -hmm. most part and we'll be back with those right after this are you in the middle of wedding planning and feeling overwhelmed there's no need to fret my friend christine smith designs is here to rescue you Offering wedding planning, coordination, and wedding floral design services, let us help relieve your stress and make your wedding day dreams a reality. Visit us at christinesmithdesigns.com. That's K-R-I-S-T-I-N-E smithdesigns.com and request a free consultation. You'll be so glad you did. Okay, welcome back, everybody. And being that it is only a few days away from Christmas, Chris Kringle is in the house. <laughs> um, Chris... Pringle, Chris, <laughs> wrinkle. Oh, why not? I'm getting old, you know, so I'm yes, always. Yes, <laughs> and cranky. So, you know, we'll call you Chris, uh, Christmas with the cranks, which is you. Thank you. Thank you so much. I, I, I wear my badge with pride. All right. Well, so before we went to the break, you were talking about that on this episode, we're going to talk about like some of the hot Christmas toy items or Christmas items from years past, from the past century. So I do have a very important question. Is a gasoline powered car one of the hot ticket items from the past century? Uh, actually, no. This oh. is before gasoline. In the Flintstone days, they had like a <laughs> rock you can play with. 
the, so what was that called like bedrock or something like that uh, I don't know, but pebbles. anyways, okay. So, well, I want to hear. So, okay, this this comes from People Magazine, and it says this is the ten toys that have caused the holiday mayhem over the years. Okay, um, I have an idea of one of them that's got to be on the list, but I'm going to wait to hear. So, uh, let's start from the the bottom up. So, I want to hear number ten. Okay, well, they don't have numbers on this. They oh, just okay. have ten of them. So okay. here we go. I'm gonna scroll through this here. Now, this one, it is a classic. It's actually, if you think of the movie Toy Story, this character was a beloved character in the movie Toy Story. But what they're talking about here is the original Mr. Potato Head. Oh, okay. I could see how that was a big thing like back in the day because, I mean, that was before Mrs. Potato Head came out. But I feel like there could be just like so many different hours of play. And I think that it was like a real novelty at the time because maybe they just had like baby dolls and things like that. But it was like the first time that something was like so, so many different like pieces and mix and match. Babe, this is going to blow your mind. What? It came out in 1952, but here's the catch. I didn't know this until I actually watched this YouTube video. Mr. Potato Head was an actual potato. Right. I remember that. I had no idea. I, I mean, it was before I was born, but yeah. No absolutely way. Was. They just had the little pit plastic um, ears and arms and eyes that you just stick into a potato. And that's how it became a potato head. But then they became like the plastic one version later because you can put the pieces in it and all the other nuts, oh, nuts, so stuff. Oh, that makes sense. But I was watching the video of it. It's like a commercial from like the 50s, which is nuts, you know? And the guy's like sticking all the bits and pieces into an actual potato. <laughs> That's and I'm funny. like, I guess you can make a Mr. Potato Head out of anything. So it's like, here, you can play with your dinner, bake it, <laughs> fry it, put in it, put some ears and a smile on it. That was probably the commercial right there. It kind of was. Gee, Timmy, this is fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, what's the next item on the list? Now, this is a more recent item they have here on the list. I remember this one being all the rage in the mid 90s. We're talking about none the other than Tickle Me Elmo. That was the one that I was thinking was going to be on the list. And I remember that there were people that were like hiding the Elmo dolls. And there was a time when even the employees at the stores were getting in trouble for hiding the Elmos because they wanted to get them and they weren't allowed to like purchase anything until the end of their shift. And so where I used to live, that that was a challenging thing that some people were getting into trouble. So like if you worked at Walmart and you knew there was a shipment of uh, Tickle Me Elmo's, Elmo's coming in, you'd like hide. <laughs> tickle, tickle Me Melmies? <laughs> tickle, tickle Me Tickle Me somewhere. I don't know. But um, they have those and you'd have to hide them for, you know, you hide no, one. People were hiding them so that they could buy them at the end of their shift for their own kids. And that's where they got into trouble. That was from Sesame Street, I believe. Yeah. It, yeah. Elmo. Elmo's And it looks like da -da, Ro da -da, da -da, Rosie... Oh, thank you. I appreciate you singing that. Uh, Rosie O'Donnell was the one that actually helped kick kickstart the Elmo she Madness. She uh, really on was. Her show. I remember that. Oh, that's nuts. I do remember that one. It was all the rage. Now, do your Elmo impression again. La, 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 Elmo's world. <laughs> I love it. That was great. It's fantastic. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's in my little hidden talent. I don't have to put it on display as much as you do with Mickey Mouse, but you know. Oh, just had, boy. No, no. Creepy. Okay. Creepy mouse. Oh, okay. I'm creepy. You think Elmo is. Okay. No, so, I said that your impression is Creepy Mouse. Oh, thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. Okay. So also we're sticking with it the 90s. It's a compliment. Well, I'll take, I'll take everything as a compliment. That's how you, that's how you live longer in life is you, you take everything. It's a compliment. As, <laughs> you take everything as a compliment. Mm -hmm. You know, you suck. Thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> so sticking with the 90s. Now, I was never a big, I didn't really get these toys, but I've heard of them. You've probably heard of them too. We're talking beanie babies. Okay. So I was, I was not a beanie baby person, but I did have friends that had these beanie baby collections and they held on to a lot of them. And some of them have become collector's items and are worth a ton of money now. What and is a beanie baby? A beanie baby. It's like, it's almost like a stuffed animal, but they had like little beads. So imagine like a bean bag, like yeah. what's inside of a bean bag, but inside of like, a little tiny, like maybe like a four, five, six inch little animal. And they had all different kinds of things. And so think of it of the equivalent of like our kids with Pokemon cards, but with like actual little stuffed animals. Are and they, they had, big or are they tiny, kind of small? No, they're so tiny. They're like, you know, like six inches. They weren't big at all, but they had limited runs on some of the different types of animals. And so people would like 
when there was a new Beanie Baby coming out, they would like race out to try and get it because there was just a limited number. And the more limited number there was and the better condition they kept them in, they were worth more money. Well, here, I just says here that they actually were worth thousands of dollars um, today if you were to keep them intact. You That's know? what I was saying is some of my friends have had them and they were just yeah worth a ton of money. Well, a lot of these collectible toys, you think about the old Star Wars toys and the old like if, if they're in mint condition, you know, you can make lots and lots of money for this kind of stuff, you know? Yeah. I mean, I, I guess that you could just sell them now. But, you know, the one thing that I think about is after these people had these kids had such a huge passion or were so obsessed with Beanie Babies. Now, you know, I don't know how I would feel walking into a 45 year old, 50 year old living room and seeing, you know, Beanie Babies and cases everywhere now because they are worth so much money. But it's like, do you what do you do? Do you just like end up selling you know, them? It's and then why are they worth so much money? Well, it's well, I, you know, because of collectibles, you know, people are in these crazy They're things. Stuffed animals. Yeah, I guess, but they if they're actually the are original Beanie Baby brand, maybe they are worth some. And like you said, if they got ones that are actually like valuable, like they'd make a lot of them. Anytime there's something, there's a limited quantity of it, and people want it, it goes up in value, no matter what it is. It could be a stick or a rock; it doesn't matter. As long as there's a few of them and people want them, there you go. I need to come up with something like that—a limited run of something that people like, and then sell them for a really high dollar amount. Maybe that's going to be the the key to my success in life. Yeah, well, you can try that. <laughs> so the very next thing we have on our list of hot toys for Christmas. Now, I remember these because I was so into these toys. Are you kidding me? We're talking the 80s kids. When okay, I was, when all I was right. Kid, tell us what it is. This, we're talking Transformer action figures. The Transformers, like from the movies and all that stuff, man. You're dating yourself, dude. Transformers were actually toys before they became the cartoon, before they became, or maybe the cartoon came out at the same time, but the cartoon and the toys were around the same time, I remember. And then the movies came out a lot later, obviously, and that kind of stuff. But 1984, Transformers were massive. The Autobots, the Decepticons, oh my goodness. Like I had, I, every every Christmas, every kid had them. And of course, the commercials were on TV Saturday morning cartoons with all these things. I watched that on the cartoons. I liked watching the Transformers cartoons. I was into it. I just wasn't into the toys. Well, I, I love the toys because the cool thing with the toy was that you could literally have two toys for the price of one. You could have this cool robot figure, dude, and you can have, like, say, a car or a plane or whatever it could possibly transform itself into. Yeah. And I remember uh, some guys at school had had the bigger ones, and then I had the Optimus Prime one. That was my Big, my big Christmas present one year I had uh -huh. that or, or birthday present. I forget which, which holiday it was. But those things were like all the rage for many, many years. The Transformers were massive. I had those. I love those. I wish I had them still because they're probably worth a ton of money. But OK, I don't know if my thing is on the list now that you were talking about something that you collected. But do you know that what I used to be obsessed with and collected? Uh, what if it's the next thing on this list? You go right ahead. Oh, no, you tell me what the next thing is. The next thing is Furbies. No. Oh, trolls. <laughs> trolls is what I was that into. Was, that Furby, the trolls and Furbies, I, I think they're the same thing. I don't know. I no, mean, the Furbies are the little things that they would talk to you. I remember my little sister Courtney got one. Actually, she got two one year. The year that they were big, she got two of them. And I remember, and I was like, what in the world? But the things were creepy, Chris. The, they weird, were so, the weird eyes, right? No, Not just the weird eyes, but they would wake up randomly and no. they would go, well, because they, they looked like... I would say they look like a gumdrop, a furry gumdrop, you know, like gumdrop candies. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so like the shape of a gumdrop and they're furry and they have these eyes and they would open and close. So they would make that like mechanical sound, like the click, click sound. Yeah. The click, click. And then they would go arr, arr. like their eyes would were go. They click, were they ro robotic or what? I mean, were yes. they ro robots? Did they have their own mind of their own or a personality? Well, or they something? didn't walk anywhere or anything like that. They just like opened their eyes and they would make noises and then you would pet them and they would go and they would make just like weird noises like that. Well, according to this, it says it was the must have creatures of 1998. They were yep. so popular during the holiday season that the retail price, I'm talking about the retail price itself bumped up from 35 to $100. And think of that in 1998, $100 was very different in terms of what it was worth. Like I wonder what that is today. I think maybe like, 200, 300 bucks, maybe? I don't know. I'll have to look up some inflation rates. But uh, I, but I do remember that my little sister did get, I think she got two, but I know for sure she got one and it was pink and it had like turquoise colors on it. But I remember that thing creeped me out because it would be in her bedroom 
and I would like go in to do something and it would look at you and walk, all of a sudden did it follow you with your eyes no all of a sudden it would wake up and it would be like and it would like it literally did that little noise and then it would like click its eyes open and I was like, I was like that thing is freaking creepy hey speaking of creepy here with that new movie coming out it came out a little while ago with a doll that was like like a Chucky? Lo- no, sorry, honey. no, it was like it was like a real like a real doll, like a real girl doll, like a in the future robotic doll or something like that. And oh, like- I just saw the poster for it today at the movie theater when I was going past. It was like uh friends have changed, like friends of the future, and it was like she's a doll that's supposed to be like your friend. But she's like evil or something. Yeah, that's crazy. Or something not so like that. So okay. So hey, uh speaking of that, speaking of uh, dolls, we we got our first doll on the list, actually. Well, we are talking about the famous movie Frozen, and we're talking Frozen, the Elsa doll. Now, which one is Elsa? I forget. Elsa is the main one. She wears the blue dress. She is the ice queen, literally. I thought she was a good girl. She is. She's the ice queen, but she's like the one that she shoots out ice from her hands. She That's why she's like the ice queen. And then Anna is her little sister. That movie was massive, and it says- It still is. Uh, well, yeah, they, didn't they make a ride or something in Disneyland or, or a whole show or something? Yeah, about- and today I was at the mall just today and they had the big poster that Frozen, the Broadway musical, is coming to San Diego. No way. I'm telling you, it's like they're just writing this, writing this all the way through. But was there a Frozen doll? Yeah, so it came out in 2014, it said, because of the movie, of course, and all that stuff. But it says here... That the precious products were selling for upwards of one thousand dollars. What on eBay and Disney stores had placed a two frozen item limit on customers because people were buying these things probably like and selling them on eBay and whatever That's else. Crazy. Well, as it happens, these hot toys come out and there's only a limited collection of them. So the next item on this list, something I have never in my life have heard of. I don't know why it's even so popular, but it's called Zoo Zoo Pets. Zuzu pets? You don't know what those were? No, I have no idea. Oh my gosh, are you serious? Yeah. Okay, well, so, it came out in 2009. Okay. I, I don't remember. So the Zuzu pets, they were like a little keychain and it had like a little, it represented a pet that you had to like, the, it looked like a keychain, but it was like a little computerish kind of game. And oh, you had, to, you had to feed or something, right? Yeah, you had to keep your Zuzu pet alive. And so it was, yeah, it was like almost like a keychain size that kids would have and they would have to try and feed their pet and make sure that it slept. And it was like all the rage. I never wanted one because who wants a gift that's that high maintenance? And like, <laughs> like I'm going to virtually kill my pet because I didn't feed it now, at two o'clock in the morning. Now the pet is just a computer screen, right? Yeah. Or so. So couldn't they just make an app of that? I mean, it came out 2009. Honey, no. 2009, they had apps back then. No. 2009. Yeah. The the iPhone came out in 2007. So. Yes, and it was elite and left with just a few people, and so you didn't buy your children an iPhone at that time because you did kids didn't have cell phones at that time. It just wasn't a thing. And so they would get these little computerized little Zuzu pet. Oh, it kind of reminds me of the old fashioned, like before uh, Nintendo had the Game Boy and all that junk. You had these like very generic, very like two tone color, like, like video games for your handheld Right, but these things. ones were just like the, they weren't color screens. They were still like the old school, like calculator looking thing. Yeah, exactly. Like the kind of gray with the black little block. Yeah, it just it wasn't that high tech. Well, here it says, which they see these things cost about eight dollars at the stores. Right. But 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 if you want to pick one up on Amazon or eBay, you're paying sixty dollars. Right. Or these nuts. Yeah, things. I mean, That's everybody crazy. had them. And then our teachers would get so mad when everybody came back to school and they'd be like, but I have to feed my pet right now. And no the way. teachers were like, <laughs> put it away. Uh, you know, that sounds like somebody else I know. Yeah. I got I got to play Fortnite. I'm going to build a match. Yeah. But they were like, I have to feed my pet right now. They were going to it's going to die. I remember I was oh. I was teaching at that time. And like I would hear things like chirp in the classroom. And I'm no like, way. Yeah. And I was like, what is that noise? I just have to feed my pet real quick. And I'm like, what? <laughs> And the kids will like pull out this little keychain thing. Someone, if somebody said, I have to feed my pet real quick, I'd be like, okay, we have no pets in class, Jimmy. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, the kids would like at, l- at lunchtime or at break time, because I was teaching middle school at the time, they would be like like feeding their little pets. Could they like have fights with each other? Are they, like, put, If you put two of the things together, did they like talk? No, or they didn't anything? talk to each other. They just had their own little virtual pet. Oh. <laughs> their little oh. virtual pet pixelated in, you know, two-tone color. <laughs> but all you did was just feed it? Did you do anything feed else? It. And I would have to look up, but I just like look up what the Zuzu pets were. But I just do remember that they were, you know, you did have to keep them on a schedule and you had to like feed them and put them to bed and things like that. 
Oh, well, that sounds like a lot of work for a toy. <laughs> so the very next thing, I remember this toy oh so well because okay. I wanted one, even though I, I guess it's kind of okay, girly. Okay, it out. Tell us what it is. I'm talking about the lovable teddy bear that talked, Teddy Rux, Ruxpin. Teddy Ruxpin. I had a Teddy Ruxpin. Look at you. I did. It oh, had- wait. No, did I? My cousin had a Teddy See, Ruxpin. We, knew somebody, we always knew somebody who had one. But- My cousin had a Teddy Ruxpin. I think I had a Teddy Ruxpin. Because he told stories. Right. So basically, you had a cassette tape in the back of them. You put it in the it, ba- it wasn't a cassette tape. It was a cartridge. Oh, wow. Before, it wasn't oh. a cassette tape. It was a cartridge. It was like like you had to plug in a cartridge into the back. And then Teddy Ruxpin would tell you a story. I loved that doll. I could have. And also, I think, too, if I remember correctly, there was a microphone that you could actually talk into. And his mouth would move like you're talking, like he's talking or something like that. I thought that's what it was. Um. I don't think so, unless you like had a possessed Teddy Ruxpin. No, well, I, I thought, don't think I thought, so. I thought you can do like story time with your kids. Like you can actually like with your kids, honey. How old were you when Teddy I'm Ruxpin? Saying, came I'm out? saying like if you were a parent and you had this thing back in the day, you could like talk into the thing. The mouth would move and it would like say what you're saying, but like in Teddy Ruxpin's voice. I thought it um, did something like that. I think you're thinking of more modern day because i don't <laughs> think technology was that advanced when, when my, i was just gonna say when i had teddy ruxpin when my cousin had teddy ruxpin i was gonna say that i was right around like seven or eight years old and i remember that it was so cool and i remember the cute little outfit little overalls it's so cute yeah i just remember the cool commercials and i thought that was super cool how they were like the things talking telling stories and i'm like that is so neat and did they come out with a girl also eventually i can't remember if they came out with a female version that wasn't teddy ruxpin i'm gonna look this up okay it didn't say that but i was right it does say cassette player according to this said there was cassettes in the back of him that went in there like a little cassette player and he would just tell the stories his mouth would move and they actually had an animated series in 1987 and of course, these things tripled in price because everybody wanted them for the holidays. Christmas was just right in the corner. Yeah, I don't see the female version of them. I do see the old Teddy Ruxpin and the cute little outfit. He's so cute. I want a Teddy Ruxpin. Can you buy me one? You know, we should have named Clover. If Clover was a boy, Teddy Ruxpin. I think <laughs> that'd be so adorable. Do you know how much they are right now? If you were to buy one today? Uh, new, never used Brand okay, new with okay. all the tags, Teddy yeah. Rex bin. Yeah, mint condition, yeah. $600. No way. Yep. That's like almost the price of a Rodecaster Pro. Uh, Yes, it, it is. <laughs> okay, so I got a couple more here. And this next one is actually fairly modern, I would say. It's it's the first like tech one of the whole group. Okay, Okay, tell me. Nintendo Wii. I'm talking oh, the first yeah. generation. Not the, not the like the newer whatever they got now. It said it came out. I said the Wii was released in November of 2006, but it quickly disappeared off shelves by Christmas 2007. It was actually the funny thing is about the Nintendo Wii is that it did a lot of cool stuff. It was a game changer. This whole moving your body around to do the controller stuff and all that. But it also, if you remember, it was a few hundred dollars cheaper than the closest other big console. Yeah, I remember when um, that Wii came out. And what year was it? Uh, it said here 2006. Okay. So Ezekiel was very tiny. So we didn't get one. I do remember when the next generation of the Wii came out, he was a little bit older and his grandparents um, on his dad's side did get one. But I remember I didn't get the Wii, but I got this other one. It was... Um, was it a generic one? Like the G? <laughs> no, no. It was, it was part of... I think it was related to the Xbox, like when Xbox was trying to do like similar Wii technology. Yeah, they had like that motion sensor bar thing. That's exactly what I was going to say. Thank you so much for stealing that from me. Oh, well, you can have it back. So it was that little piece that I got when I had like my first, well, not my first one. Ezekiel's father had his first like Xbox or PlayStation thing like that. And then it was like an animal game that we were like in front of it and like trying to be animals and like trying to like jump and be animals and i can't remember ever getting it to actually work yeah but it was a cool concept and i think maybe zeke figured it out but yeah well the cool thing about the wii was that it says here that it really fueled a bunch of people that wanted to get up and not just sit on the couch and do video games because if you think about it your video game usually you have a console you have a controller you sit on your butt on the couch or whatever your gaming chair you're just sitting and just 
pushing buttons on the controller. The Wii was the first of its kind to get you up off the couch in the living room, moving your arms around, swinging these joysticks around like a baseball bat or or a cue stick or a, you. Were, they think they had one with like a tennis racket. You were like swinging yeah, around. Yeah, they did. And things like that. It even says everybody from young kids to adults, even some senior um, citizens for like retirement homes were playing these things. Right. Because they used it for senior citizens for physical therapy because they couldn't get out and do actual sports, but they needed to have like some of the basic movements. And so it was helping with mobility. Uh, But what's next on the list? The next is the number one, probably the biggest of all time. The very last one I have on this list, the biggest Christmas present, Christmas present toy that everybody had to have. It was all the rage. I'm talking Care in Bears. Ni- 1983. Care Bears? You are close. What uh, what other big item that Rainbow was, Bright? Uh, you're, you're My this, little pony. You're in the same wheelhouse. Massive. I'm thinking thinking bigger than that. Okay, just tell me. I'm talking one, the only, the Cabbage Patch Kids. Oh, yes. Cabbage Patch Kids. Did you have one? I don't think I ever had one that I can recall. I know people do have them going to school. They bring them and they have them and all that crazy. And nonsense. what year was that? It said in 1983. Oh. It was probably like the biggest like toy for Christmas of all time, I would think. Because each each Cabbage Patch Kid was kind of tailor tuned for each kid. Like it, they were all different from each other. Yeah. Just and like they we still are. have them this day, to this day. They're still Cabbage Patch Kids. They look very different. They're not the same like heavy quality that they used to be. Well, they still do have the Cabbage Patch Kids. But I remember like back in the day, I mean, they, I guess they came out when I was, I was a baby. So I didn't get one right away. But I remember my sister Kim got one and she had like reddish hair and she loved that Cabbage Patch Kid. And I will never forget the day. So my parents, I was like, I think I was like 11 or 12. Um, My parents were like having a yard sale of stuff at the house. And they had each of us responsible for like different things. And the thing was like, whatever we sold, we got to keep the money for because my parents were just like trying to get all of us sisters involved in it. And there was like all of these different things around. And there was a little girl, she walked in and she grabbed the Cabbage Patch Kid off of the, there was like a stack of boxes and she was asking me how much. And I was like, uh, you know, $5. And they were like, were haggling me down and they gave me the money and started to walk away. And my sister was like, what did you just do? You just sold my Cabbage Patch Kid? And I said, yeah, it was with the stuff to sell. She's like, no, that pile was the not to sell pile. And I was like, (laughs) I was like, I don't know what to tell you. Like, I just sold it to them. Like, do you want to get it back? And she was like, so mad at me, like, so, so, so super mad at me. And she's like, I, you know, if I ever had a daughter, I wanted to give her that Cabbage Patch Kid. And I still to this day feel so, so bad. You didn't catch him at the door, like catch him at the car door. Like, hey, wait, I, don't wait, wait, wait. Re- I don't remember why she didn't go and and say that was a mistake. It wasn't for sale because I was so confused because it was with all of this stuff. But whatever happened, those people took it. And to this day, I still feel so bad that my daughter didn't or my sister didn't get to pass down her Cabbage Patch kid to her daughter. I had a Cabbage Patch doll and she did look like me. And I remember. No way. Really? Yeah. That's, yeah. that's, all, that's awesome. I remember when my parents got her for me and she had the um, chipmunk cheeks is what we call them in my family. So she had the. the round cheeks and she had brown hair and little pigtails. And when I got a little bit older, um, you know, this, I got her when I was like tinier, but when I got just a little bit older, my mom, she sewed a lot and she would make my clothing because, you know, we didn't have a lot. And so she would always like, we, when we would have like fancy dresses, like for Christmas and stuff, she would make them. And so she would sew uh, matching clothes for my Cabbage Patch Kid, and that was so cool. Oh my goodness! Now, could you take your Cabbage Patch Kid and you walk around with it in the same outfit? Yes, of course. That, that was like the whole point. That's amazing. That's yeah. so cool. And specifically at Christmas, like we would have matching dresses for Christmas. No way. Yeah, that's my awesome. mom is super talented with like sewing. Like that was the thing is getting fancy dresses from stores when we were little was something that wasn't in the budget, but my mom could take fabric and she'd make these dresses with like, um, like ruffles and lace. And then, um, they were called pinafores. They look kind of like an apron, but it was like all white. And it's a thing. Like it used to be a thing, like little girls would wear these pinafores on their dresses. So it was just like, 
I don't know how to describe it. I'll have to show you a picture, but I would have my my Christmas dress with my little pinafore and then my Cabbage Patch Kid would have a matching one too. And that then is- when I got older, my mom surprised me. I remember, I think it was for my 11th birthday and she made me, um, it wasn't a Cabbage Patch Kid, but she made me a life-size doll that was the same size as me. Life-size doll? Yeah, a life-size stuffed doll with a matching dress. And uh, I named her Brandy and she was four feet tall. No way. Yeah. My mom sewed the whole thing. What about your Cabbage Patch Kid? What was your name for that? Uh, you know what? I can't remember what her name was. I think it was Soleil. Soleil. Now, did each one have their own name stitched on them or something? I forget. They did not. They had a birth certificate they came with. That's and right. And they had their name and their birth date. But on their booty, they would have the little symbol for that they were a real Cabbage Patch. Like you would always look to like you'd pull down their little because like the little babies, the gr- little baby girls, they would have um, little um, bloomers, like little white bloomers on, on their bottom. So you would just like pull it down to make sure that it was a real Cabbage Patch Kid. What do you think was all the rage with that? Because it sounds like it's a normal doll. So what, what was so popular about the Cabbage Patch dolls in particular? Well, so one of the things was I think that for the first time in history, like in our culture, is you started to see dolls with different skin tones and hair tones that were more reflective of the population. And so like growing up, it was really hard to find dolls that had a darker skin tone. Oh, yeah. And so when I actually, my second Cabbage Patch, because I bought myself a Cabbage Patch, I'd saved up my money and I got another one. And I wanted a little African-American baby. That's what I wanted for my cabbage patch. And she was so cute. And I I went with my money and I remember standing in the aisle and like I had to pick the right one because that was when they had like shelves and shelves and shelves Is of cabbage patch kids. After the big, big rush to get them? Like, well, kinda- I was only two when cabbage patch dolls came out. Youngster, so, my goodness. Of course, yeah. So I think that I was probably close to like nine or 10. And I think I'd saved up like $40 and that was like a big deal to oh, be able to save up yeah. enough. Yeah. I, yeah. I think, um, I thought they were like into the hundreds when they first came out because they were so rare, so hard to find. They like, they were like jacking them up the stores. I think the stores were actually doing that where they would sell out, but then they raised the prices because they only had three left or whatever. Yeah. I'm not quite sure, but all I know is that I, in my history, I have had two cabbage patch dolls and i do love a cabbage patch like if anybody was to find me i don't know if i like the new ones as much like the new babies they're like that plastic that's not so sturdy like if you push it hard like it, you can like push their faces in that was the thing with the cabbage patch dolls is that it whatever it was made out of it's not like some of those softer baby doll faces now that you can like dent it in it was like sturdy. It so was you like could, so you could like swing it around, hit your brother I in the was face. Just totally say that. I was like, so if you happened to get into a fight with your sister, which may or may not have happened, you could use your doll as a weapon of choice. <laughs> I guess so. I'm just saying it would do some damage, but uh, yeah, I would. I wouldn't mind. Uh, I don't play with dolls necessarily, but I I did always dream of if I had ever had a daughter, also being able to get her a cabbage patch but i never had that never had that joy now, now, did they have a tv show related to the cabbage patch yeah. kids? okay there was there was it, a little cartoon it must have come out at the same time then i'm, I'm guessing and there was books because oh, i wow. would read the little story books about the cabbage patch dolls it sounds like fraggle rock remember that back in the day oh my gosh i loved fraggle rock the cartoon i watched mm-hmm. that too i remember that too ah oh, the good old days and so, the smurfs and the Smur- oh i love smurf smurfettes yeah. oh my smurfette was my was a babe back in the day <laughs> it's funny smurfette was the only chicken town <laughs> surrounded by all these dudes i know and i wonder why well you know i mean they didn't they breed they breed differently over there i don't know I don't know. That's interesting. But last woman standing or something like that. But this has been interesting to like talk about all of the different toys. I haven't heard of any big toy for this year. But then again, we don't have littles anymore. Right. And also, too, is I don't watch morning cartoons like I used to. Are there even morning cartoons good, anymore? Good point. I don't think there is morning cartoons anymore. I think now it's all like YouTube and the Cartoon Network. And I remember when the kids were little, we'd watch, obviously, a lot of Disney Channel. And they have all those Disney commercials and Disney stuff. And they have. I think that's where a lot of those kind of commercials come out during the holiday season for the next big ticket item. 
But I really, I'm so out of the clue, out of the loop with this kind of stuff. So I, I don't even know like what the kids are into. Maybe I'm just an old fuddy duddy, but. Yeah, I would say that. <laughs> so I don't really know what you youngsters are into. Um, are they you know. snappers? You little whipper snapper. Get off my lawn. <laughs> Well, thanks for coming up with this list, Chris. I know that this is wrapping up our countdown to Christmas. Um, Folks, we are kind of on the fence still whether or not we're going to podcast next weekend since it is a holiday and family time. Uh, We hope that we will be back with you next week. But no matter what, we're going to be back with you soon. And thank you so much for listening and happy holidays. And if you want to know more about us and the Chris and Christine show, you can always go to our website, which is chrisandchristineshow.com and yeah there'll be a link to that right in the show notes down below check that out and we'll check you back next time 